You have found Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggles, stories, and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Authentic Business Adventures can be found on Facebook. We are coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Radio Studios, un- underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. I sounded awfully excited about that Facebook thing, didn't I? I liked it. Yeah. My name is James Kateman, business coach at Draw and Customers Business Coaching and author of the Bold Business Book, available on Amazon. Today, we're welcoming, slash preparing to learn from, Amy Carrick and Ginny Jenkins of Mindful HR. How are you guys doing today? Good. Thanks for having us. Yeah, nice. thank you. You're feeling the love for the yeah. HR business? Yeah, absolutely. This I'm excited to interview you guys for a number of reasons. I mean, you're two women, started business. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's more exciting is that you started an HR business. And just from the experience that I've had with HR people... It hasn't been great. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Typically, if and, you're seeing us, you might be in trouble. Yeah, like right. I, I don't have a ton of experience in that because I haven't worked with a ton of Fortune 500 companies, but I've watched mm-hmm. people. I used to work at this dealership in the parts area and yeah. back in the day. Uh, this was before cell phones were common. Uh, the parts area was the only place that had a phone. Mm-hmm. And so you'd have mechanics having to deal with HR. Oh, right. right? <laughs> and like it's me and the counter and this mechanic just with his hand on his head. <laughs> Talking to HR, like, seriously, what what is going on here? Right. So, I mean, I'm presuming that you guys are doing an awesome job and you're helping people out as best you can, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we um, when we decided to go into business, we really wanted to help those small business owners. Yeah. The ones that, you know, have employees that are working with them, but they're not large companies. So mm-hmm. They don't have the resources to have their own HR person on staff full time. Yeah. Right? But they're going to have needs. If you have people, you're going to have some HR needs at some point. Sure. um, Depending on what it is. And so that's really kind of what we set out to do is help those small business owners take some of that stuff off their plate so they can focus on growing their business. That's fair. That's fair. So So. can you elaborate? What is HR? (laughs) Because I had one of my employees ask me today. Right. And I was like, you know, the baggage that employees have, it helps with some of that. But then it dawned on me, like, I don't know all of what you guys do. Right. So can you help me with that? Yeah, I think um, (laughs) definitely most people know human resources um, when you might be in trouble with something. But but our thought is is that uh, we help you be proactive, so you never really have to get to that point. Nice. Um, Okay. We help employers uh, make sure that they're paying people legally, transparency, Mm -hmm. policies in place so that uh, a positive structure is there for employees to follow the rules. Everybody knows their expectations. Sure. Um, Amy, do you have anything in addition? Yeah, I mean, it just depends on the company, what, how they view HR. But, you know, the way we view it is, you know, any type of system or procedure that has to do with your people okay. is HR, basically. So, so this is including interviewing? Interviewing, hiring, okay. firing, training, firing, absolutely, and okay. anything in between. So, you know, growth and development or performance management, if somebody's not quite on the right track, you know, right. HR will help and, and oh. step in, get people on the right track. So, um, okay, so if somebody is a trouble employee, mm-hmm. right? and they're like, do I get rid of this guy or not? <laughs> exactly. You can say, let's set up a system to try to help him improve. Yes, absolutely. And if he doesn't yep. improve, we can walk him to the door. Yeah. If he doesn't improve, you got yourself a good employee. Yeah. I mean, and I think that we spend a lot of our time as HR people kind of helping managers figure that stuff out like okay you know when is a good time to work with them versus say goodbye to them sure. you know that kind of thing a lot of like mentoring and just talking through business owners of their people mm-hmm. problems and people decisions sure and how to handle them you know okay. making sure you're legally compliant but also making sure you're you know contributing to a positive culture and you know you're Okay. You're motivating so this, your employees the way you want to. So things like employee handbooks, and absolutely, stuff like that? yeah. Okay. In fact, that's a big part of what we have been doing since we started is employee handbooks for people. That's okay. usually where we tell people to start. You know, if they don't have oh, anything huge. written down, a lot of companies they start off with just a couple of employees and they think, okay, well, we don't need all this stuff written down, right. and then all of a sudden they have a couple employees. So we always tell people that's a good place to start if you don't have anything written right. down yet. <laughs> you know, it's interesting you say that. I was just talking with a couple of business owners this past week. And we were talking about hiring employees because yep. right now unemployment rate is grotesquely low. Yeah, right? in Dane County. Which is good. It's, it's, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, it's good and bad because I is. just had to hire a couple of people for calls on call and it's been a challenge. Oh, yeah. So, and I was talking with these uh, these other business owners about employee handbooks and they're like, oh, I should probably get that. You should probably do that. And I was like, well, you, you've been around for like 15 years. What <laughs> right? do you mean you don't have an employee? <laughs> like there's not even something in the corner with 
cobwebs yeah. on it or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah something. And it blew my mind because mm-hmm. I'm like, how do you keep track of vacation or know what they get or sick days or how do you even know if the employee's breaking rules? Or how do you how do you stay competitive in um, in hiring people because oh, if, sure. you, if you don't have those policies and handbooks and benefits that you're able to show them, mm-hmm. how are you going to convince an employee that they want to work for you? Right. Yeah. Um, so I that's think kind it was by start. the cuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think they're just like, yeah, you get two weeks or sure, whatever vacation, right? right? Yep. And they Trust just assumed that, that yep. the employer assumed that the employee was, or employees, plural, were rolling with it. Yeah, two sure, weeks right. is what we get. Right. And then the employees are just like, yeah, two weeks. Mm-hmm. Right. right? <laughs> so it, just, it blew my mind that it went for that long, over a decade. Right. And no one was like, hey, you know, Rodney, you've been gone six weeks this year. Right. Right. And Rodney could just as easily say, isn't that what I get? Right. Right. And if nothing's in writing. Writing, I know. You know, it's surprising how many business owners, you know, don't set things up, you know, right away. And like you start with like us, we have two people in our company, right? Right. So we're like, okay, we can keep track of everything that's going on. We don't have to write written policies, but I can see how easily you just (laughs) add one person, another person, another person. You're like, oh, it's just three more people. But pretty soon that you know, it multiplies your work, you know, right. just taking care of all those different people. So. You just become huge and you can't scale. Mm-hmm. Different people and their families. Mm-hmm. Uh, because mm-hmm. a lot of policies revolve around um, family medical leave and oh, sure. know, other things that affect other people's family members. All right. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I got a couple different avenues that I want to run down today. Mm-hmm. So avenue one is, why don't you tell us the story about how you guys started, how you guys met, when you guys decided, screw this, let's just start a business. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Just throw um, the coffee cup against the wall. I'm out of here. Right. Stapler. No. Uh, <laughs> nice. Well, it's so I, <laughs> um, I guess I'll um, tell how we met, and then you can talk about sure. Mindful HR. So um, in 2011, I um, was leaving a political campaign company, um, mm-hmm. and I applied for a job at Food Fight Restaurant Group, and Mm -hmm. um, Amy was my direct supervisor and my um, the the person who uh, interviewed and recruited me. And Mm -hmm. uh, I started as a payroll administrator, basically, um, but I had a strong HR background at that time. Sure. Um, So it was just kind of a really good fit. Uh, Mm -hmm. And so six and a half years later, the stapler got thrown. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Yeah. You know, we had worked together for (coughs) many many years, and. enjoyed working for Food Fight for many years. Um, mm-hmm. And they just went through a lot of different changes and a lot of those changes affected the HR department sure. and um, you know how we were working. And so we just decided that it was a good time to maybe go out on our own, um, especially seeing the east side of Madison. We're both east siders and just seeing the boom of business activity on the east yeah. side, all the small businesses, Growing. the different shops and breweries and restaurants and mm-hmm. everything going on and we just thought hey you know this might be a good time to go out on our own and start seeing if we can connect with some of these small businesses because we know they're hiring staff we know how hard it is for Mm -hmm. these businesses to hire and retain good people Mm -hmm. um so we thought hey let's give it a shot and so so who went to who like mm -hmm. amy did you go to Ginny or Ginny? did you go to amy you know i think we had been joking about it for a long for many years okay Um, and one of these days we're going to leave here and start an <laughs> HR company. I kind of, <laughs> yeah, we kind of played with some names. Yeah. It okay. just really happened organically. I mean, we hadn't even really decided that we were actually going to do it when right. we left Food Fight. Okay. Um, but it was definitely an option and we just right. kept on talking. And Hold on a second. You left the job before you started the business? Correct. We did. You did. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so I had done a little bit of consulting for people just kind of on the side through friends and stuff, done a couple handbooks for small businesses. Sure. And so I had done that a little bit and had done a little bit in the fall and made some connections. And so I was kind of thinking, well, you know, maybe I'll just do this a little bit and see sure. where it goes. And then, yeah, we just, I think in January is really when we decided like, okay, I think we're going to go for this and started, you know, applying for our tax numbers and sure. started all the setup that all right. goes with that. So we did a lot of that in our downtime between leaving and starting. So you guys both left the last job at the same time? Um, Similar. Oh, oh, yeah, soon, but not not at the exact same time. But did yeah, you guys pretty take, close. Did you guys keep in touch with each other? Or was oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah Some absolutely. email that was just like, we're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, outside of Mindful HR, Amy and I are good friends. So, yeah. okay. um, you know, yeah. there, there was some cocktails and other gotcha. things and yeah, what have you. For sure, yeah. <laughs> All right, alcohol always helps start a business. Right? <laughs> totally. So, yep. so you guys figured out, okay, let's start this. And then at what point, was there any point, I should ask, that you guys had some apprehension or some fear about starting? I mean, 
you know, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, there's ups and downs. And I think at the beginning, it was like, all right, we're going to try this. And sure. See what happens. Um, certainly there was apprehension. I, I think it, it was a little bit outside of my comfort zone to start a business. You know, sure. I am an introvert and, you know, I'm not really, you know, all that social and extroverted. So, like, getting out there and networking sure. and, like, selling myself was a little <laughs> intimidating. So I think that was a big fear that I had. Sure. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think one of my big fears was, you know, I'm I am the age that I am. I'm, you know, 37 and um, you know, this should be like the height of my career and do, sure. do we go out and start our own thing and and rock out Dane County or do we or do I continue down a path in administration right. where I've had, you know, 20 years experience. Sure. Um, and I had never wanted to be a business owner. Um, okay. I like the stability and structure right. of somebody else oh. handling a lot of that behind okay. the scenes stuff. Um, so we have two apprehensive people starting <laughs> a business. Right. That's not the first time. Certainly not the first time. Sure. So. Right. But it's, it's been really, um, it's been really easy and really fairly organic. Um, right. And I think the biggest thing is, uh, at least for me, is that I trust Amy, mm -hmm. and I trust that the products that we provide to, to companies um, are are of high value. Sure. Um, right. And I really do believe that we we have an obligation to one another to create positive work environments. Mm -hmm. um, because if you're not happy at work, you're probably not happy at home, and you, you're probably not happy in all of your other relationships. And so, right. I think in a grandiose picture. Um, sure. We need to be mindful of that. Right. Yeah. And that's your, your whole business, right? right. So can, I can imagine if you guys had two unhappy employees as yourselves, right. it'd be tough to sell <laughs> right. HR. Right? Totally. Yep. Nice. Yep. So how did you... Well, there's so many questions I want to ask here because mm -hmm. I'm like, we've got two apprehensive people starting a business. <laughs> and then Jimmy just tells me that it's easy. <laughs> right? I know. <laughs> she says that sometimes and I'm like, it, it. I mean, certain things I think are very easy and working together is easy. Um but I think we are going through the struggles that all like new business owners sure, are going through sure. too, you know. Um, so I come from a place where I can say starting a business when you are starting it seems like a challenge on the verge of overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But once it's done, you're like, oh, oh, mm -hmm. that, that was it. It's like right. me trying to swim right. now. Yeah. I can't now, but I'm sure once I figure it out, it'll be because you see people doing miles of it. That it's just yeah. not that big of a deal. Yeah. So do you guys have an office? We do not have an office right okay. now, so, so we're working out of our homes, basically, okay, and meeting clients on site, um, sure. or, you know, finding places, but it hasn't been. Okay. In fact, we haven't really found that we needed an office, other than we would like sometimes to have a more, you know, dedicated space to work together, but... Sure. So yeah. you guys are working in, in your own places then? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Yep. So I imagine there's phone calls and emails going all the time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Daily. Yeah. And we probably get together, what, two, three times, times a, a week. week. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, that makes it easy then. Wake yeah. up and do HR in your jammies, whatever. Yeah. So it's all good. Sometimes. <laughs> no Depends. uniform policy yet. Yeah, not yet. We haven't, <laughs> don't have a dress code yet. So. It's not in the handbook <laughs> not, quite yeah, yet. Huh? Yep. Shh, we do not have a handbook, so <laughs> don't oh, tell anybody. <laughs> I know this HR company that can right. help you. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know we keep joking. We're like, I don't think we need one yet, right? <laughs> Probably wouldn't hurt. Keep right? each other in line. Right, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, do you? How do you find making decisions together? We got two business owners. Is it fifty-fifty mm -hmm. or is there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yep. making decisions has got to be somewhat of a challenge every once in a while, right? Uh, we actually haven't come to a crossroads where okay. it's something that I want to do that Amy doesn't want right. to do. And sometimes, if I want it a little more than Amy does. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Amy, Amy does a really good job of slowing me down a, a little bit because I okay. kind of move quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a nice balance as far as sure. that goes. Um, yeah. But I don't know that we've ever gotten to uh, definitely not an argument yet. Right. Okay. Not like a standstill. <laughs> no yeah, yeah. We're a pretty good balance for each other. Like, Jimmy's good at, like, pushing me, like, into things. Like, sure. I'll be like, I don't know. Come on, let's just do it. You know, let's just go for Already it. Already signed mm. us up. Yeah, we're going. <laughs> <laughs> we're so, doing this radio show. Yeah, so she's like really good about that, like pushing me when I need to be pushed. And sure. Then sometimes, yeah, like she said, I'll be like, wait, 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 let's just slow down just a little bit sometimes. Nice. <laughs> so I feel like we have a good like push pull um, balance with what we're doing that helps us kind of right. <laughs> keep All right. a good balance. Yeah. So you guys have been in business for seven months? About like what? Mm -hmm. Five to six. February first. Yeah, February first. February first. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, what has been the biggest challenge in starting this business? Do you want to go, or do you want me to? I mean, for, you know, <laughs> let me just roll off this yeah. list. <laughs> for me, I mean, it's been the selling. You know, like I said, like 
Um, that was something I never had to do in previous jobs. Sure. And, you know, you, it's like you get hired as an HR person. You don't have to sell your services. <laughs> they already hired you for them, and there's right. plenty to do, you know? Right. And so that was the biggest challenge for me. How do we go about selling what we do mm -hmm. um, and, you know, selling yourselves? Which sure. is not a, always a comfortable place for me to be, like, sure. talking about myself all the time. All right. Either. So that was my biggest. Yeah, I don't know about you. Uh, I would be similar. Yeah. I, okay. you know, I, as I said, I've been in administration since I was 18 years old, and um, yeah, I've never had to sell anything. And I've been dealing with people cold calling me for years and years and years. And um, you now know, you got to be on the other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like that karma train pulled in. You know? Sure. So, <laughs> Every time you slam that phone down. Totally. It was always polite, luckily, to those sure. people and thank them. Uh, so, right. um, but yeah, that has been hard. And then the other hard part for me was. HR is so expansive, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's payroll, it's benefits, it's recruiting, it's sure. culture, it's diversity, right. it's inclusion, it's, uh, gosh, what else? Benefits, benefits. did I say that yet? Compliance. Handbook, policy, <laughs> wage and hours. So sure. when you're trying to sell that to somebody, how do you how do you depict that with a visual or how do you explain that? And, and sure. then how do you convince a business owner this is going to save you in the long run to be proactive now? Right. Kind of like that handbook, right? Like you're going to really wish you had that handbook if you right. have one upset employee. The ounce of prevention, right? Right. Yeah. And they go to the Workers' Rights Union or uh, Justice Center and, and that's a free service and they get free representation and, and you have nothing. Sure. Right. Um, you know, that's scary. And mm -hmm. and. I think too. I don't want to scare business owners. You know, right. that's not what yeah. mindful HR is. No, if you wanted that, you just sell life insurance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Someday exactly. you're gonna die. What's right? happening with your family? Right. What's your yourself. daughter gonna do? <laughs> so anyway, that's that's kind of my mm -hmm. the hardest thing that. I so you gave a laundry list there. Do you guys offer all those? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You do. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. payroll. At this time, we don't offer um, payroll processing, although if there was a, a large need for it, we might. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely wage and hour, payroll auditing is, a, okay. is something good to go through. What is um, wage and hour? I'm sorry. Oh, wage and hour is just the laws that the uh, Federal Standards Labor Act uh, okay. requires you to follow. So, for instance, overtime, paying people gotcha. properly, okay. uh, regular rates of pay. Minimum making, wage. You yeah. know, making sure people are paying... You know, basically all the labor laws. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's more laws. I was told this by an attorney once. There's more laws surrounding human resources and payroll than any other type of law. Really? Yeah. I found that very interesting. Mm -hmm. I use it often because I'm like, oh, that's very, <laughs> very that's, interesting. Fits us very well. Right, right. That gives yeah. a, a reason to exist then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are you calling on business owners that are typically just a couple employees or something like 30 employees or... Typically, like anywhere from just a handful to up to like 50, I okay. think is our, our target. But we mm -hmm. certainly can work with larger companies. I mean, we both worked for Food Fight and they have sure. at this point, I think about 1,100 employees. So we are, That's you crazy. know, we have experience in the large, you know, that larger employer world. Mm -hmm. um, but usually at that point, people will have their own teams on staff. Sure. Right. Or they should. Uh, or they should, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that 50 and, um, and below is, is kind of what we're looking looking at as our target market right okay. now. Um, because so at what point should a company have, like employee-wise, employee count-wise? Good question. It's a great question. Um, Nailed it. Yeah. Definitely <laughs> um, over 50 laws start changing. Yes. Um, Family Medical Leave Act changes. Sure. The Affordable Health Care um, mm -hmm. Compliance um, changes. So definitely you should have somebody that has some kind of knowledge either on a consulting basis mm -hmm. or um, – you know, has some background in HR, mm -hmm. um, over 50. And definitely you should have more than uh, one. Um, they say, what is it, one per every 200 employees you should yeah. have. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that typically does not include payroll. Right. So that would be um, one gotcha. okay. HR person. Yep. Yep. For every 200 people. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. Interesting. Similar to IT. In sure. Fact. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I could, it's so crazy. That's. I was just thinking like, I'm thinking of, Bigger companies here that have thousands of people. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my gosh, they gotta have a small army of HR people. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Or Hopefully, maybe they should. Hopefully, yeah. All Not right. always. You know, it's a, you know, I think technology has changed it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you're able to automate a lot of prox processes that you didn't used to, or like having you know application databases and software that helps you know sure. with recruiting. And I think has been able to help with that ratio. But still, to have a good HR presence for your employees, I think is sure. important. Sure. Nice. Yeah. So what have been some of your biggest successes since you started? Oh, oh 
<laughs> Getting a new stapler. Well, being here. Yes. Yeah, right. yes. High five. Yeah. We finally made it. <laughs> um, I think that a major success, in my opinion, is um, seeing how welcoming the small business community is. Oh, and sure. How yeah. everybody is so supportive. It's not the. It's not that I didn't think it was that way. I just wasn't banking on it. Mm. And we get referrals left and right from mm-hmm. people, and people are so supportive sure. and positive, and mm-hmm. that's been a major success in in mm-hmm. my little heart. Yeah, I think nice. just making some good connections within the small business community, like Jenny mentioned, like we found a really good group of referral partners who at first glance when we first started connecting we thought well they're almost like competitors like what but once we started talking you see the overlap with your business my business Mm -hmm. like I can't do everything you can do maybe we can share clients in this way so I think you know just meeting have people like that to connect with I think has been a big success and has helped us a lot like build our momentum sure people outside the the Venn diagram there right Right. I I do this circle right yeah that's awesome yeah that's very cool and you, did you get those people by networking or by cold calling? or? Um, well, we, um, because of our background um, in hospitality, one of our first moves was to join Madison Original. Okay. Um, we're an associate member of mm-hmm. theirs, um, and they have 52 restaurants. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and since that's our... Uh, that's your niche? Yeah, that's your you. background? Yeah, yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, that was an easy sell. So some of those came through Madison Original, right. just meeting with restaurant owners and talking. Very um, cool. Yeah, and so then they'll refer us to... Maybe an ad agency that they mm-hmm. use, or maybe right. a, you know a printer that they might be using. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's been really nice and helpful. All so, right. Yeah. Do you guys have any desire to go back to a day job? Oh, I work. Six oh, yeah. hours a day. <laughs> oh wait, a week. Say that one more time. Sorry. Um, you mean like an uh, eight to five day job? Just uh, yeah, having a boss day job. Oh. Like working for somebody else. Yeah. Like closing up shop and just. Right. Doing something else? Not right now. It's not very appealing. You no. know, once you've kind of been out on your own and right. um, kind of figured out like how you want to operate and fit everything into your life. Sure. Um, yeah, I think it would be hard to go back to that. But totally get never that. say never. You never right, know what's right. going to happen. No, but, I, you know. I'm cool saying never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. There are certain instances where never applies. And I, I can honestly say going back to working for someone else would be a. a unnecessary challenge right because you just find something that they did wrong right right (laughs) and you know you can do it on your own right Right. yeah well yeah there's that but i guess to say like i would be in a position of i don't know flipping burgers or whatever Mm -hmm. right i'd be like oh we can fix this system right sure we can organize this better but we could save 30 seconds on every sure cheeseburger that we make or something like that the boss would be like look we've been doing this for 45 years there's no reason to change (laughs) now yeah yeah. Like, I'm putting it in my smock, right? Yeah. I'm out of here. Right. <laughs> totally. So it's just one of those, like, it'd be tough to see something that needs to be changed. And not be able and to. And not being able to actually change yeah, it. Yeah, But sure. then you come down to the selling thing, which I'm sure you guys see this. I see this with selling calls on call for phone answering. I see it with selling uh, business coaching. Mm-hmm. And I bet you see it with HR. You see people that can clearly, clearly have a need. Right. right. It's like you see somebody that's drowning. You're like, hey, I got this uh, got this life jacket. And they're mm-hmm. like, how much is it? Yes. <laughs> like, well, it floats. <laughs> Do you and want it? Yeah. I know that you can afford it because there's hundreds of other people that can afford it. And right. they're like, what color is it? <laughs> and you're just like, are we really asking questions like right. this? Is that really what's happening? I'm just going to go check the next drowning guy. Maybe right. he wants it. So it's just a challenge talking with people that have a clear need. Right. That are either afraid to say yes because maybe right. they don't know even like mm-hmm. I don't understand HR so right. I, I can't buy it if I right. don't understand it right yep. or uh, maybe you don't want to know what's wrong maybe you yeah. kind of oh, politely fair. ignore it uh, fair. because unless right. somebody's making you know it, it's it's scary to say oh I might be doing that wrong sure I haven't um, been sued in 20 years so right. I know we've been doing this all along sure um, mm-hmm. or I didn't know that's the law uh, so sometimes when once you find that out you should make a change and so sometimes i think people are afraid of that too sure interesting yeah because i suppose there's a certain amount of ego involved when you start a business now you're now you're talking to these entrepreneurs that have Mm -hmm. that ego right and you're telling them hey funny story you might want to change this yeah you're doing it wrong (laughs) (laughs) you're totally doing it wrong or that's one way to put it yeah Yeah. i made that mistake once of uh going through a handbook and just being 
real honest about the handbook changes, and uh, I, I could have done it with more care because right. um, I right. think it hurt their feelings. Gotcha. Um, right. They did ask me to review it, though. Right. <laughs> Man, right. I got a red pen in some time. Yeah, we'll just... a lot of red pen. <laughs> right. Yeah. And realistically, you may have saved them sure. right. thousands of dollars, maybe right. a couple of employees. Like, An attorney mm-hmm. fee, for yeah. sure. Thousands your, of yeah. dollars. Leave your feelings at the door. This is business. Right, right. right. Yep. Especially and you're with something paying me like to this. be honest. Right. Oh, sure, right. Right. sure. You would want me to be. You don't want me to, you know, not tell you if, you no, know. I mean, if was it hourly or was it? Uh... Typically, we bill on an hourly basis. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then the faster that you can tell them, the less expensive it's going <laughs> to no, be, that's right? That's right. <laughs> yeah. So we don't have to talk about the weather. Let's just totally. right. fix your handbook here, right? Right. right. But right. Um, there, there is ego, and so you do have to take that into account. Sure. And I think HR in particular is a very vulnerable topic to talk about. Um, mm. Because you're dealing with people, you're mm-hmm. dealing with their processes sure. um, and potential liabilities. Mm-hmm. Um, so establishing that trust up front, uh, I find to be mm-hmm. almost necessary. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. So you mentioned, I want to dig in this a little bit because you mentioned motivating employees mm-hmm. and you help with that. Mm-hmm. So you got to tell me the magic bullet there because <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that this out. This is all Amy. Yeah. You know, I think that the biggest thing is like, everyone is motivated by different things sure you know everyone has different priorities or different values or there's just certain things like some employees are motivated by money some Mm -hmm. are more motivated by a fun work environment some are more motivated by you know all different factors and so really it depends on who who do you have on your team and who are they as people Mm -hmm. and what motivates them you know so there you go how do you find that out right you talk to them (laughs) so i've I've, I've tried just asking like straight up because i don't want to waste any time Time, right yeah, i'm just yeah. gonna ask him what <laughs> motivates you mm-hmm. and generally speaking i get either i don't know mm-hmm. or money uh-huh. when you hear about money you're like okay well you're making 25 percent more than you started yep. initially yep. and you're still broke so i feel like we could just give you bags of money and you'd still not know what to do with it right so uh, i feel like the money answer is often the price question when you're trying to sell something right. like i don't know what else to ask or what else to say so let's sure. just say money right sure so I feel like that's not to say that it's not a portion of it. Right. But I feel like that's kind of a cop out answer. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, I think that like for most people, certainly money is important. Right. That's why mm-hmm. they're working <laughs> or they sure. just be volunteering with their lives. Right. But I think for most people, there's a thir- certain threshold of like, OK, I'm making enough money to sustain my life or whatever. But mm-hmm. you still need more things out of the workplace, right. you know, and so. A lot of what we're seeing is, you know, people want to grow and learn things. Mm -hmm. They don't just want to stay doing the same thing over and over again. Sure. So I think that it's important for managers and leaders to recognize that and how do they want to grow here, you know, and learning new things and trying new things. And so they're not just stuck in one aspect of their job. Okay. Um, So I think that's an important one, you know, with the millennial generation, um, Mm -hmm. you know, keeping them engaged and involved, I think is particularly a a big challenge for people right now. Um, But um, I think that um, really that personal connection and linking like the purpose of whatever your company is doing Mm -hmm. um, to, you know, their own values is important. Um, So that they have a connection, you know, a reason, a purpose Mm -hmm. um, to their job other than, well, I'm just here to make a paycheck, you know, and showing, you know, them the like, how your particular role contributes to the success of the whole organization and how important that is. So right. anytime you can communicate that, like, you know, we couldn't survive without this role because this role does X, Y, Z that contributes to this that we're trying to do with the company. Sure. Anytime you can align that and communicate mm-hmm. that, I think is huge too. All right. Any type of, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> great. And, and sharing the goals of the company with employees because right. oftentimes, you know, the, the, the people at the top, it, sometimes don't do it on purpose, but they don't share, you know, what, what are we trying to do this year? Mm-hmm. Um, because how do, how do I know how I'm contributing to the goal if I don't know what the goal is? Mm-hmm. Right. Right. It's interesting you say that because I just, well, I'm in the process of doing this exercise with my employees. By in the process, I mean I presented it to them. I'm still waiting for feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Helping you them might put... give them a deadline. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I didn't think that I would need to. I thought it was just going to be like tomorrow. <laughs> But it hasn't been for the past two weeks. Um, I asked them to help with a mission statement and vision statement Mm -hmm. to try to help them, like, 
I'm like, I got this idea of what they should be. And I even sent them what my idea is. Mm -hmm. But I haven't gotten any feedback on like, oh, this is nice. Or like, oh, we should probably tweak this. Or don't we do that? Mm -hmm. Knowing full well that I know that I didn't just nail it. Because I didn't write it and be sure. like, oh, yeah, that's magical. Right. Like, oh. Yep. <laughs> so, and getting some employee input from that would help me. Right. Just understand like, what do you guys think we do here? Mm -hmm. I can tell you, I we had uh, interviews for... Um, two receptionist positions and one of the first questions that I would ask people to qualify them and to make sure we're on the same page is to ask them if they knew what job they were applying for Uh huh. and like yeah. only 20% of the people knew <laughs> wow. it blew my mind wow like you don't need, like you literally don't know what job you're, you're applying, applying for like the one that wow. you showed up to interview for <laughs> you don't know wow like we're training yes. assassins or something <laughs> surprise surprise yeah yeah and then I would ask him, like, did you go to our website? Sure. Like, how did you find out about and, us? Yeah, no. Let mm -hmm. them have no idea. They just oh, wow. threw their resume out to a million places. To so and, many places. Mm -hmm. wow. And one of the, the unemployment rate is so low. Sure. Right. That the criteria for us for getting an interview was just to send in a resume. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because yeah. if you send in a resume, <laughs> we would schedule interviews. We would schedule group interviews. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't tell the people that it was a group interview. Okay. Um, oftentimes, it would turn into a one-on-one -on -one interview. Because uh -huh. we had one time when we had six people scheduled and one showed oh, up. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, it's rough out there. It's crazy. Like, <laughs> it you don't really even show hard. up for the interview. Yeah. Don't even show up. Yeah. I would recommend, um, I always like the idea of requiring a cover letter. Oh. Um, because yeah. then at that point, you actually have to take some time and think about sure. it mm -hmm. and, you know, draw interest from there. Um, so if you make them write a cover letter, that just shows that they're more invested. Sure. Yeah. Now, with that being said, you know, you might be cutting out. 25% of your so applicants. We, that's right, the thing. We right. had to lower our hoops. Initially, right. when we first started, we set something up so that they had to send in an email. Mm -hmm. So we had this automatic email that went out when they sent in a resume. It had three questions on there. And it was like, what's the best way to answer a phone and a couple other questions. Just mm -hmm. basic stuff, right? We wanted an email response with those three answers. Also in that email was a phone number that they could call or that we wanted them to call. Mm -hmm. And there was a, one question on there. And I forget what the question was. But it was something basic about answering the phone. Maybe it was leave a sample greeting or something like that. And so they were supposed to leave a voicemail message with the sample greeting. Okay. Because voice for phone answering, right. that's 80% that's of the game. Yep. yep. Yeah, I mean, if you have a good voice, you can be an idiot, and you'll yep. still get stuff done. <laughs> right, right. We've hired people that were like that, and they did pretty right. well, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> At least temporarily. Once we learned they couldn't learn anything, then we had to get rid of them. But to, to start with, mm -hmm. I'm like, if you're, we had another woman that was super intelligent, crazy smart like she had a spreadsheet of the job she was applying for this is oh, wow. years ago yeah we're like holy cow we, this is our angel yeah yeah right we hired her but she had the most monotone voice in the world oh, right people would end up angry at her oh no on the phone right. when they didn't call to be angry Free. right right like they're calling for a massage and for, she's like oh well we can't do it tomorrow <laughs> And all of a sudden, oh, no. yeah. she's like, why are people yelling at oh, me? Oh, gosh. And just her voice was her turning voice into not, yeah, just yeah. this demeanor that was getting people en enraged. Where this other woman, the most bubbly person you'd meet, uh -huh. idiot, <laughs> right? But she was so chipper on the phone right. that people would call. We had our own tax time where people, some people are getting some nasty letters from the IRS. So they're right. calling a little, right? Yep. Calling the accountant that we're answering phones for. And they couldn't be mad at her. Even though she was just didn't do very well helping them, she did <laughs> a given amount, but they weren't mad. In the end, right. their, their problems got solved. Well, at least the problems, as far as we're concerned, got solved. I don't know what the RS did with them. Right. But we got stuff scheduled and all that jazz. But because she was so bubbly, mm -hmm. she got stuff done. Right. And I'm like, how can we combine these two Those people? Those two people, <laughs> I know. Sometimes it's that empathy that you show people when they're right. when they're upset, right? right. You totally. know, or they need help, and it's like, okay, I got you. Mm -hmm. We're gonna fix this. Right. Totally. Yeah. So that was a rabbit hole. I apologize for that. No, but no. Talking okay. about the the first things to do: sending the email and the phone mm -hmm. number. We cut out three quarters of the people, right? Because they didn't even do it. They right. didn't even do it. Yeah. I'm like, and we timed it. Like this takes four minutes to do. Four minutes. Right. Right. You're probably right. on social media more than four minutes a day. You can oh, probably yeah. knock this out, right? But it was so weird. Like, we're cutting out too many people. Right, right. So then that was a challenge. So we're still learning the, the hiring process. So Yeah. You might also consider, like, doing a phone interview um, oh. to cut those people out, too. Yeah. I found I, you know, learned that lesson a couple of times where 
you know, sometimes you'll start the interview. I don't know if either one of you have had this happen where you start the in-person interview and it's like right away no, within right the away. first, like, yeah, we can be done <laughs> like, okay, you know, <laughs> and it's like, gosh, if I just would have talked to them just a few more minutes, yeah. we would have figured out right away this was not sure. going to be a good fit. So mm-hmm. sometimes, so what I then would start doing is like, you know, calling them like, oh, you've applied for this position. Do you have a couple minutes to talk about the position right oh, now? Oh, wow. I love that. And then you just say, okay, this is what we're thinking. These are the main responsibilities. Is this what you're looking for? Mm-hmm. And just kind of maybe talk through some of what your deal breakers are right away. Uh-huh. And then that way, then at that point you can say, okay, if it makes sense, do, you know, would you like to come in and meet in person and we can continue this sure. further? Oh. Um, and if not, or, then, or you can, you know, then you might say, okay, so well, you know, because of X, Y, Z, maybe this isn't the right fit sure. or, you know, you can say, we're still looking at candidates right now for the mm-hmm. interview process. So sometimes just talking to them a little bit for a few minutes That's a at great that idea. initial step might be able to save you all some time nice. and you'll be able to hear their voice and how they right? talk on the phone and things That's like fair. that. So try that next time. That's see. fair. I like that. I'm going to mark that down <laughs> <Yeah>. here. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you guys looking at hiring anytime at all or our, like for our own for your own yeah I mean we I don't think so not, not for right a now while. not for a okay. while I don't think we we can pretty much I think handle what we have going on right now and then some gotcha. for a while so all right at some point maybe you know, maybe yeah sure all right where do you guys expect to be in three years or where do you want to be in three years well, I think we would like a brick and mortar. You know, mm-hmm. we'd like to have some some office space. Right. Um, we're looking on the east side of Madison because mm-hmm. that's where we both live. Right. Um, and um, we like the east side, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Right. That's more important. It's growing. It's yeah. growing. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'd like that. Yeah. Dedicated space and be able to like hold events and trainings for the community. Sure. Um, so just having a space where we could do that and be a resource for mm-hmm. small business owners and also, you know, employees too, mm-hmm. um, at some point we do, you know, we want to be able to help the workers too. So. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Do you, um, do you guys have an idea of what, like how big of a place would this be? Mm. Mm, I don't know. It wouldn't have to be <laughs> too just, big. <laughs> I'm just quizzing you live right, right now, so don't mind me. How many square feet? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't think that we have any we don't need a, a lot but like I said if we wanted to have some events some sure. space where we could hold you know small groups of people sure. as well as like meetings and things like that nice so, nice. so yeah. this is cool because it sounds like you guys work very well together you start the business together this is mm-hmm. awesome yeah mm-hmm. what has been the biggest challenge that you guys have yet to overcome hmm. presuming question. there is one <laughs> right <laughs> Or has yet to be discovered. Uh, you know, I think that we would like to. Um, I think that we would like to start signing um, companies on on a monthly retainer. Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. Um, yep. Because long term and sustainably, yep. um, it's really better for the company. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's better for the employees because it helps stabilize yep. things, and mm-hmm. obviously, it's better for us. Mm-hmm. Um, just as far as budgeting and forecasting goes. Sure. Yep. Sure. Um, so I think. That. I don't know if yeah. you can think of anything else. Yeah, I think that would be it. We've done a lot of project work, big okay. and large projects, which is mm-hmm. great. But yeah, like Jenny said, getting to a more sustainable model sure. for us where we're providing ongoing services for people right. on a regular basis, not just that makes a sense. one-stop sense. Employees are shop. ongoing. So. Right, absolutely. So I think that's kind of our next challenge right now is how do we move in that direction gotcha. with our okay. clients. Yep. Okay, so is that something that has been a limiting factor because of you hadn't thought of it? Oh. You hadn't thought of it, or is this more a limiting factor because it's tough to sell just overall? I think it's kind of tough to sell. I think that a lot of small business owners, the first time they might think they need an HR person is like when a problem comes up, oh. you know, and it's not necessarily like something they're very proactive about. Sure. Uh, you know, thinking ahead of time of putting stuff in place. It's like, oh no, something came up and now we don't know what to do. Gotcha. Scramble, scramble, you know, let's I got a find... letter from workforce development. What should I do yeah, with Yeah, you know, or, or, you know, their manager quit or, you know, sure. whatever happens, they're kind of in a crisis mode sometimes mm-hmm. uh, with, with the first time that we you know talk with somebody or they need us and so selling that like proactive plan for sure. people I think can be a challenge but I think it can you know help prevent a lot of problems and it's so funny that you say that because with calls on call we have the same situation you'll be talking to the same person for months mm-hmm. and they're like oh yeah we should do that one of these days right, right? Blah, blah 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 and then all of a sudden some crisis happens right where, like their mom is in the hospital or something like that. Mm-hmm. So they have to be pulled from their business. And we sure. get the call that like, hey, can you start answering phones right. in about 10 minutes? <laughs> right. 
I'm like, well, <laughs> there's some some things we can do. But, logistical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we have to work some magic and stuff like that. But, like, it doesn't have to be a crisis. I've been talking right. to you for this for six months. Right. Well, yeah. Just, totally. No one saw this coming. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever does. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you, you guys Are you guys married? No. No. Oh, yes. yes. Not to Maybe. each other. <laughs> I forget. <laughs> I thought you meant to each other. Well, that question came out wrong. <laughs> do you guys have spouses or family or we something do. like that? Okay. Yes. And how did that work when you talked to them about you guys starting your own business? You know, very supportive. You know, my husband was very supportive and has been along the way. I don't think that, I mean, I wouldn't have been able to, to sure. do it without that, without his support and mm-hmm. patience, I think. You know, obviously starting your own business, you're not going to be drawing an income right away right. And working through all of that and so sure. yeah i mean he's been very supportive and was definitely encouraging it to happen nice say. yeah was he do you think that he pushed you more than you pushed yourself in regards to starting um i think i probably pushed myself more you know okay. i think maybe he was a little bit surprised at first just because of my personality and it's not something oh. i had ever thought about doing okay. um but i think now he's yeah he's really excited for us nice and it's been very supportive very so, cool yeah how about you? I am married. All right. Um, <laughs> not to Amy. Okay. Uh, my husband's been extremely supportive, and, um, you know, we kind of talked about this for a while, just kind of joking, and he was always on board, and he's kind of been pushing more than, um, not more than I wanted, but he definitely sees a need for it, and he knows that um, Amy and I are really solid, and we're good mm-hmm. at what we do. Um, so, yeah, he's pretty excited. He's, uh, you know, ready to quit his job because <laughs> we're going to be bringing home, bringing home the rain. Rain here. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you guys have a website? We do. We do. Yep. All right. What's the website? Uh, it's www.mindfulhrllc.com. Mindfulhrllc.com. It you got seems it. easy enough. Yeah. How about a favorite business book? Oh. Oh, wow. Um, so I love um, Simon Sinek. Um, oh, leader, sure. Leaders start with Eat why. Last. Yep. He, yeah, he does start with why too, which sure. is great. But I love the Leaders Eat Last. Okay. Just that like mentality of like, you know, if you are a leader, whether you're a business owner or just or a manager, you know, you're the one that you know goes into the fire first. You're mm-hmm. the one that um, faces the challenges, that takes the fall. You're the first one to feel the pain. Sure. You know, if there's a problem, that type of thing, and just really, you know, taking care of your team that way mm-hmm. builds so much loyalty in your people. That they'll sure. give back to you. You know, as long as they know they're safe and they're taken care of with their mm-hmm. leader. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really, really love that one, and I always encourage people to read that one. Nice. So. Very cool. Uh, yeah, and this is real cheesy because same author, um, but start with why. I'm yeah. actually reading it now, and okay. um, I've, I saw the the um, TED talk a long time ago, sure. and I really do believe that um, if you start with why, people are more likely to buy into whatever it is that you're working for. Sure. Um, why do I? Why do I? Um, do HR? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, or why do I follow this manager during hard times? Or sure. why do I get up early on a Saturday to come in when nobody else will show up? So sure. um, I think providing people with why, um, mm-hmm. both at work and at home and mm-hmm. with any decision that you make, um, goes a long way. Have you had to rethink that then? Or have you come up with a reason for why? Uh, for Mindful HR? Mm-hmm. I, um, I actually heard this from someone else, but it really resonated. I think I heard it at a SHRM conference. Um, which is uh, Society for Human Resources Management. Oh, sure. And I don't recall the gentleman's name, um, but he basically, you know, said something that really rang true again, is that, you know, we have a moral obligation to each other to provide positive environments, and we spend one-third of our life at work. And so Mm -hmm. um, I know that when I'm miserable at work, I bring that home. And Mm -hmm. I'm not Mm -hmm. patient with my daughter. I'm not patient with my friends. Um, I don't want to be social. And that affects, you know, that ripples out. Um, oh, hugely. Hugely. Yeah. Um, and that energy isn't something that I want to share with the world. I want right. to be happy. And, sure. And, and so I want to make sure Amy's happy. And I want to mm-hmm. make sure that you're happy. And sure. Um, mm-hmm. As managers, I, I think we owe it to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's my why. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How and I mean, yeah, I'll piggyback on that too, saying, you know, we do spend so much of our time at work. Mm-hmm. And so if you're not happy during those hours, um, you know, a large percent of your percentage of your waking hours, it is going to affect your whole life. And then sure. it's going to affect your community. And so really, you know, as cheesy as it sounds, like to bring more happiness, you know, right. and more balance, 
um, to to people and to the community, I think we can start in our workplaces. Sure, um, that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like that would be an easier place to start than some people's relationships or their home. <laughs> right. Don't ask me for relationship advice. Yeah, we don't have handbooks for that. <laughs> I so. wouldn't even know where to I start. I wish I had a handbook for my spouse. <laughs> right? <laughs> can you tell me about the relationship that you have with some of your competitors? Or do you have oh. direct competitors? We do have a few direct competitors. Okay. Um, right. I don't know that we've actually met them directly. No, oh. I don't think so. Um, All right. I've, yeah. seen, I've seen them talk at different conferences. Mm -hmm. um, I think that some competition is healthy. And, mm -hmm. you know, I hope that everybody succeeds. And there's certainly a ton of employers. So, mm -hmm. um, right. That's kind of how I feel about I think it. People have their different niches, too, of sure. different size companies, different industries that they want to work with. Mm -hmm. um, and what they'll do, you know, what they will and won't do in terms of HR, you know. Sure. So I think that, yeah, I think there's plenty to go around at this point. There's it's so safe many. to say the need is there. Yeah, yeah. You I just think have to so, get people sure. to, yep. or employers to understand that. Absolutely, right. right. Yep. That's easier said than done. Right. But, uh, do you guys have a favorite customer story? Oh, gosh, do I have a favorite customer story? I don't know. Mm. Or do you have a favorite customer? <laughs> <laughs> We love all our customers, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's just like They're people like with 20 kids. They're yeah. like, oh, I love my kids yeah. all the all same. Equally, like, no, all, no, all no, for you different don't. reasons. Yes. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to say to that one. Or do you have a, is there a specific niche? I mean, outside of restaurants, you guys mm -hmm. really hit the restaurants hard. Is there other niches that you take care of? I think that, um, and we haven't had too much of this, but I think that one of our personal values that Amy and I share is uh, wellness and oh. wellness of the mind, of the body. So okay. working yeah. with yoga studios and mm -hmm. um we are partnering with Supercharge in August to offer free HR clinics for employees and employers. Currently, oh, we're at Threshold sure. on Atwood. Um, okay. So, um, is Threshold a business or you were at Threshold literally? No, it's uh, Threshold is a business. Um, gotcha. Okay. It's like a community space. Okay. Um, they do rent out uh, room to small businesses. Um, we're there every Thursday morning in July. Uh, there's a massage, yoga there. Oh, wow. Um, some graphic learning. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a neat space over on Atwood. So. It's beautiful. All yeah. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. What is your least favorite thing about owning a business? Social media. Yeah. <laughs> Both of us. Oh, that's a huge hands high down. Five. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Such an hands down, our least favorite thing. So, tell us why. That's so awesome. Oh my gosh, that's an awesome answer. I will answer for myself, but I feel like social media is this illusion where we all spend all this time, and while it's real, and we know we need to have it, and I, we have recognition from people we don't know, so mm -hmm. we know that it's working to working, but. I feel it t takes so much time and energy, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just want to be me. You know, mm -hmm, I right. don't want to go on Facebook and, you know, right. take 17 pictures and choose the best one. Right. Um, that's just not the, right. the where I want to spend my time. I right. want to spend my time with our customers and with Amy and right. with you and mm -hmm. um, real, true relationships. So mm -hmm. Yeah, I just exactly. got goosebumps. Yeah. I, I really just like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is so awesome. Yeah. Powerful. I, yeah. I totally get where you're coming from. Yeah. It's just a lot of chatter and... It is interesting when people talk about it being successful. I'm like, what is successful? Mm -hmm. Is it likes, is it or likes? shares, or is it actually yeah. turning into dollars? How in do your you pocket? convert that into actual business? Is really one thing that I just don't quite get yet. I, you know, I don't yeah. know if it, you can even measure it. You know, and I don't want to spend an, an hour every day like tagging all these people yep. and you right. know, like, hey, you know, look at me. That's mm -hmm. that's just I don't want you know that that part of our culture. I could. Right. Go back in time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Recreate. Totally understand. Yeah. Totally understand. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel the same way? I feel, yeah, absolutely. I'm not a huge social media person, and mm -hmm. it's like I've found myself forcing myself to do it more just because we're sure. at the business page and things like that. So, so it's just Instagram right here. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just like, you know, yeah, it's my least favorite part and pushed me to do more social media that, and be on there more than I normally would. Right. Um, which is one thing, you know, you can just go down a rabbit hole sometimes trying oh my to, God. you know. Yeah. Be in there. And so, yeah, like Jenny said, I'd, I'd rather spend time with people, building actual relationships with people mm -hmm. and connecting with people in person, mm -hmm. you know, rather than, yeah, that kind of illusion of, hey, look at us, look at sure. what we're doing, you know. Look at that, me, yeah. Look at me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I feel the same way. And I, it's interesting talking with you guys now. I'm like, I do a fair amount of stuff on social media, but nowhere near um, what I see a lot of other people doing. Mm -hmm. But then I think, like, do I need to? Right. Because I don't, 
yeah, I guess now that I'm thinking, I don't know that there's necessarily a return that I can say like, oh, X because of Y. Right. But then that's also something, how do you measure that? Right. Right. Because it's like it's measuring arbitrary. It's like, hey, how did your billboard do? Right. We don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't no know. Idea. I can afford it. So I yeah. guess it's good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, we'll hear people say, oh, yeah, I think I saw you on Facebook or something. Sure. So it's like, that's nice to hear and people are aware of us. But mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, we've never had a client say, oh, I saw you, you know, I was on, liked your Facebook page and now I want your services. Right. You know, I don't, I don't know that that's. No. And I would also <laughs> say that, you know, these old school business people uh, who don't know what the Facebook is, right. they're not on Facebook and they're successful. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. I kind of, you know, I go back and forth. Sure. I think um, we view it as like a necessary evil that we have to have, <laughs> like just a baseline of it so that people can find us and see us and sure. get to know us a little bit, mm -hmm. but that it's not something we want to spend a lot of Post once a week time. so people know yeah. each other's pulse, but outside right. of that, there's no like... <laughs> Yeah, I right. talked to, there was a radio station, not this one, um, a private radio station, whatever, that was, they had a social media person, mm -hmm. and they were posting, oh, I can't remember, I think it was eight times a day. Oh, wow. And I was, I was that's like, like that's, all day. that's once every three day. hours. And it was just, it was junk. It was stuff, right? right like, here's right. a singing goat, here's a cat that can balance <laughs> on a tight world. Like, right. it was singing just goat's a good idea. Right? stuff, right? Just right. stuff. And it blew my mind because I was like, um, are you making the world a better place? Right. 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 And I can't say yes. Mm -hmm. And what does the singing goat have to do with your radio station? <laughs> right. Oh, it no. Yeah. Just getting some attention. You yeah. Know, so, I mean, like... you get your likes and your shares and all that jazz. But what did that do? Did that build your brand? Right. Right. I mean, I suppose... Um, they could have gone back to their boss and said, look, we got 5 million shares. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. The singing goat really did it for us, right? right. <laughs> and then right. did that bring advertisers to the radio station or more listeners to the radio station? Right. Probably not. I probably have a not. hard time believing that that was the case. Right. Yeah. So it was interesting. I was like, oh, I'll, um, that's a lot. Do I have to do that? Do right. I really need right. to do that? Yep. And from a time, the opportunity cost of investing that kind of that kind of time into social media Right. Holy cow, like I got one customer and it only cost me 70 hours a week. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, and what are you putting out there? You know, you got to be so careful. Like you have to edit it and you right. have to make sure you're representing yourself so, properly. Right. And, you know, I don't want a singing goat on our website. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too late. Join Maybe us. Maybe a llama. But... Maybe a llama. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm kind of partial. We are way high tech here. Yeah. <laughs> Higher class here. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Um, so what have you learned in the six, seven months that you've been in business? You probably learned a few things that you didn't necessarily know before. I mean, I think we've learned a lot about just various aspects of business. I mean, the marketing, the social media, Jenny's done a lot with the website and pretty much whipped it up <laughs> on her own. So nice. she's like a webmaster. And, Very cool. Um, so I think like we've learned a lot just about general business in general, just a little bit of this, the bookkeeping, the client relations, the selling, mm -hmm. the networking, the, you know, and then mm -hmm. when we do get to do HR work, it's like, oh, yay. So. <laughs> when you get to do HR, that's, <laughs> you know, that's so, so awesome. It's just like some days we're like, gosh, you know, Kinda we haven't done that. Yeah, like we actually got to do some HR work today. So, you know, I think just in general, just learning, I think it it helps us understand what our customers are going through sure. with all those different hats mm -hmm. that those small business owners have to wear. Mm -hmm. It just puts us in their shoes, too, and realizing, sure. like, you can't be an expert in everything. And, no, absolutely you know, not. Your, your time is... You know, if you believe you thin. are, you're lying. Totally. <laughs> right. And I think, too, understanding, you know, how small the margins can be, you mm -hmm. know. And so when we talk with customers, we want them to know we understand, you know. Right. We know you don't have millions of dollars unless sure. you do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and <laughs> <laughs> then you should have an HR Just, person on staff. Yeah. Your ass <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so, OK, so you learned a lot of stuff. Do you anticipate that you'll be learning more? Oh, I hope oh, so. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're not fair. learning. We don't know it all quite yet. I don't like, Yeah, <laughs> we have a ways to go. I think sure. too, like learning how to ask for help. Okay. Um, I think mm -hmm. we we've both been pretty good at that anyway. Mm -hmm. But sure. being able to reach out into the community and say, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we contacted Score, which is retired executives, yep. Yep. and um, you know, it it's it's not all you're not all taught to ask for help when you're younger, especially mm -hmm. yeah. in the business, um, and maybe even more so as a female. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been really nice. And mm -hmm. again, they've been so inclusive and sure. nice about it and um that's, yeah. been, that's been a big one i always yeah. tell my students that you will never ever ever not have help available the limitation is going to be you asking for absolutely. help absolutely right. yeah because no one's going to call you up randomly randomly and say right. hey 
Unless happen. you're trying to sell you business coaching right. like me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Do you want some help? Right. right. It's just not going to happen. Right. 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 Totally. So you have to go out and say, hey. Yep. Can I have some of your help? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and people like to help you. I think so. You know, oh, definitely. If I could help you, I absolutely would absolutely. help you. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's just learning how to ask for it and being okay with it. Yeah. Sure, sure. That's mm-hmm. awesome. That's a there's a I guess going back to the ego of the business owner, mm-hmm. right? It, yep. Trying to shatter that a little bit and have some vulnerability. Right, right. Saying I don't know how to do this. Yep. I just even if it's asking for opinions and stuff like that. Sure. Score is awesome. They've helped me. Oh, awesome. Uh, with um, me trying to figure out valuation of a business. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. When I sold one of my businesses, because that was a whole, like, how do you value a business, right? Yeah. And you get the answer, like, here's 17 different equations. Oh, yeah. cool. And then, oh, yeah, by the way, it's worth whatever someone's going to pay for it. Right. <laughs> yeah. <in laughs> just the like end. a car. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, well, i got to have a starting point. Mm-hmm. Instead of just take the business, just pay me what you feel. What you want. <laughs> yeah. Pay me here's a you quarter. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious, I have a lot of questions and not a lot of time. So let's just go with, um, how do you know that you guys, how do you guys know that your business is doing well? Um, I think that, you know, obviously we're invoicing clients at the end of every (laughs) month is one goal. Um, But I think that, yeah, we just keep this momentum going and we're able to, I think, have a good pulse on the business community and what their needs are. Sure. Maybe help them anticipate things that are coming up too. And, you know, just be there for them and have it have, be a resource for people. Nice. You know. All right. Yeah. And we're, we're both pretty happy. So yeah. that's success in a thing. Yeah, the absolutely. name of the game right there. <laughs> totally. Right? Happiness is the look on your face. That's right. <laughs> uh, what advice would you give to a person that's starting a business? Hmm. You guys just did a few months ago. Right. You went off on your own. I don't know if I asked for anybody's advice other than my spouse. <laughs> right. But so let's just say you sure. run into someone at the grocery store yeah. line and they're like, oh my gosh. We just met with somebody this morning, morning in fact. Yeah. Nice. Just yeah. about to start a business. What did yeah. you tell them? Well, I said, you know, again, be open to asking for help. Sure. Right. Um, and uh, a gentleman in my rotary also gave me a piece of advice that I really liked is, you know, you, you got to give 16 times before you, before you make an ask. Oh, um, interesting. So just just mm-hmm. being a resource for people. Sure. Right. Um, and being approachable and, and being being genuine, being yourself. Okay. Yeah. 16 yeah. times. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> We're very giving. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> it just seems like a lot of people. Awesome. <laughs> or a lot of... Uh, yeah. A lot of gimmies, right? <laughs> right. It does, yes. It does, yes. That's just a lot. Okay. So before, I guess, as we wrap this up, how would you prefer people email you, fill out a form online, give you a call? Yeah, call or email. Works just great. All right. So uh, phone number. What's your phone number? Um, you can contact either one of us, 608-225-1114. Or 608-577-7255. All right. So I feel like... We gotta wrap that up into one number. It oh. doesn't have to be now. Oh. No, 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 no. I just oh, this sure. is me coming from calls on call. Totally fine. Gotcha. We're gonna figure out a way to get you guys one number. Yeah, okay. yeah. We'll just solve that problem. Oh, we oh. did have that problem. Yeah, we, we do. contacted every phone carrier. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Anyway, hold cut, cut, cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. This has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggles, stories, and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kademan, business coach at Draw In Customers Business Coaching and author of the Bold Business Book, available on Amazon. We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, and our guests, Amy Carrick and Jenny Jenkins of Mindful HR, mindfulhrllc.com. Rock and roll. Find us airing on 103.5 Wednesdays at 6 p.m. and Sundays at 2 p.m as well as at the sunprayemediacenter.com. And, oh my goodness, we just want to thank you guys, HR. You guys are angels. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I don't know how you do it, but you do, so that's <laughs> all right. We can also be found morning, noon, and night at the podcast link on drawincustomers.com. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. I want you to stay awesome, and by all means, enjoy your business and get an employee handbook. <laughs> <laughs>